USDA officials will begin enforcing a new order requiring farmers to report new or renewed outbreaks of porcine epidemic diarrhea virus, or PED, and to related viruses. The outbreak of the disease, which has a high mortality rate for piglets less than a week old, continues to move through barns across the nation. At the end of the day, this is really about saying, look, a year ago, we were talking about 103 barns and operations. Today, we're talking about 4,700. Uh, a year ago, there weren't too many countries in the world that were saying, we don't want any live pork exports. Today, there are a few. Uh, we have a five, over a five and a half billion dollar export market for pork. Why would we want to jeopardize that? The federal order requires that producers who have hogs testing positive for PED, a variant of PED or porcine Delta coronavirus, report those results to a state or federal veterinarian. The vets will help direct farmers on how to improve biosecurity and create a federally required disease management plan. To help defer some of the related expenses, USDA has cost-sharing funds available. Farmers who deliberately ignore the federal order could be fined or face limitations on where they can move their hogs. Federal officials and private pork industry spokespeople joined Secretary of Agriculture Vilsack for the unveiling of the new rule at last month's World Pork Expo. We've tried to find the right balance on that issue of heavy-handedness. Uh, as I pointed out, there's no movement restriction here. There's no quarantine requirement. This is a reporting requirement, a notification requirement, and in the long-term best interest of the operator and their and the industry. I know confidentiality is a concern for you all but I cannot do my job without good, solid data. According to USDA, the percentage of positive tests for PED and its variant continue to decline. In November of last year, 38% of the barns tested came back with positive results. By June of this year, that number had declined to 14%. We think that that's probably due to the warmer weather Although we don't want 100 degree days, the virus hates them just as much as we do. But don't uh, let your guard down. Our veterinarians are telling producers it's not time to uh, really compromise your biosecurity. Now is the time to leverage the heat to try to tamp down the virus and get ready for next fall. Last month, the federal government granted conditional approval for a new vaccine created by Harris Vaccines of Ames, Iowa. The drug is designed to improve sow immunity to PED, ideally passing antibodies to piglets through the sow's milk. Newborn piglets are most likely to die from PED as they rapidly dehydrate once infected. Harris Vaccines officials say a small test, although not statistically significant, showed that vaccinated sows lost 15% of their piglets compared to 42% in the non-vaccinated control group. The company is working on a larger study. Federal officials say other companies also are working on vaccines for PED. Humans are not susceptible to the virus, which doesn't present a food safety issue. However, the U.S. hog supply as of June 1 was down 5% compared to a year ago though experts had expected a 10% drop. A total of 30 states have now reported infections. Jackson, Minnesota-based New Fashion Pork, which markets 1.2 million hogs annually, is among the thousands of pork producers who have lost large numbers of piglets due to PED and Delta coronavirus. About half of the sows in Minnesota have been affected by it, and I would say those numbers hold pretty, pretty true to our system, too. Um, and yeah, we've definitely incorporated some new biosecurity protocols and how we handle people coming onto our site, including our trucks and our truck drivers. So there's been several changes within our system, but they've made us better. Erickson, animal well-being and quality assurance manager for New Fashion Pork, says the company dealt with a PED outbreak in the fall of 2013 and an outbreak of the related Delta coronavirus in the spring of 2014. Its Glidden, Iowa sow barns were clear of the virus in June, 
but the producers have been unable to eliminate the virus from nursery barns. These pigs were weaned today from the south farm, so they've just been placed this morning. That's why they're all tuckered out and laying out about right now. These pigs are actually getting infected upon arrival. So I would say probably by, let's see, today is Thursday, probably by tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, we'll start seeing signs and symptoms of PED in these pigs because there's lots of nooks and crannies in the barn, whether it's the water cup, the feeder, uh, the rotechnas, the nose-to-nose -nose contact. So we know that these sites are still dirty and they still have PED in them. So it just takes a matter of hours for that pig to be come in contact with that disease and start infecting the entire herd. USDA officials believe mandatory reporting should provide more immediate data to allow for faster, more informed decisions. When the outbreak began last year, federal officials said they lacked the data needed to make effective decisions to protect the U.S. hog herd. I want us to build a model together so that when the next PED comes into this country or whatever the soup de jour it is, that we act together and we act quickly. And we don't wait to see whether disease is going to cause approximately 7 million dead baby pigs. The thing about federal reporting is that, you know what, there's still going to be some farmers that choose not to or don't participate in it. And it's unfortunate because it's nice for, you know, it's being a good neighbor to let people know when you have that disease. Um, we knew in this area to, that we're at today when our neighbors went positive. You know, they were forthcoming with that information, and that's what it's really all about is, is just being a good neighbor with it. So far, the financial impact of the disease has, for most producers, been largely offset by the increased pork prices that resulted from anticipated supply shortages. But few expect this to continue if the disease spreads quickly once colder weather returns. What keeps me up at night is what's the next thing that might come through this same pathway or pathways. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.